Good day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about aluminium, specifically aluminium additives in lubricants, aluminium wear metals, and aluminium contaminants. So effectively we're answering the question, how does aluminium get into my used oil analysis results? Um, apologies if you live in the US and you pronounce this incorrectly, I'm going to be using the correct aluminium throughout. Alright, so let's talk about aluminium additives. So um, sometimes aluminium salts are used as antioxidants. Um, the way that these are created is an acid-base reaction. So, you know, reacting a phosphoric acid with some kind of, um, you know, metal base, in this case an aluminium base, will produce an aluminium salt plus water. Um, these have been shown to be reasonably powerful antioxidants, but they aren't widely used in the industry. So it's unlikely that you'll see them in a lubricant. Similarly, um, overbased aluminium detergents, right? So um, aluminium, as we identified in, I think it was the dispersant video, can be overbased, um, like let's say for example magnesium or calcium or sodium. Um, and again, the way that it's produced is an acid-base reaction. However, these are not very widely used in the industry, right? So most um, overbased detergents tend to be either magnesium or uh, calcium based and calcium is probably the most prominent one although as we described in the LSPI video starting to move towards magnesium in crankcase oils because um, they seem to reduce low speed pre-ignition. All right let's talk about aluminium wear metals and the reality is aluminium can come from anywhere in your application. Pistons, bearings, blocks, bushings, housings, blower, torque converter, in impeller and oil pump and you know, that's just a reflection of the fact that aluminium is a reasonably strong but light metal. Now, one thing to do um, if you do see aluminium come up in your wear metal results is to map this against what you know about the engine materials. So, for example, um, in the stationary natural gas engine market, there is an, uh, a growing trend at the moment to switch out aluminium pistons for steel pistons. This has got more to do with the fact that um, in order to gain efficiencies, a lot of engines are moving to higher brake mean effective pressure designs, right? And because they're running at much higher pressures, they need something a little bit stronger, therefore they're going to a steel piston versus the old style alum aluminium pistons. So if you are seeing aluminium wear metals, clearly it is not coming from the piston. Interestingly, this can also affect uh, things like the detergent chemistry because some detergents are much more effective at cleaning aluminium than they are at cleaning steel. Right, so it could have an impact on the, on the overall chemistry of the lubricant as well. Ultimately, you're probably going to see aluminium wear metals um, most likely seen in vehicles, so um, cars and, and trucks and, and, and smaller engines, although, as I said before, sometimes stationary gas engines. The reason for this is predominantly weight. So if you can imagine if I've got a, a gigantic industrial gearbox that's sitting on the floor, I don't really need to make it much lighter, right? So there's no drive to substitute steel for aluminium components. Whereas in an engine where weight equals efficiency, um, that's probably, tr that's also true in, let's say the aircraft industry, you will see a lot of aluminium components. All right, let's talk about contaminants. Now, dirt is one of the primary ways that aluminium gets in. So dirt is generally a mixture of aluminium and silicon, and you'll see in the ratio any between, anywhere between one to two and one to 12, um, where one is the, the aluminium, right? So it's always the smaller component. So dirt ingress into um, a used oil analysis sample can show up as a combination of aluminium and silicon. Right. So this is why it's really important to, um, I think I've described before, when, once you've taken the sample, make sure you put the lid back on because if dirt blows in, it will show up as a contaminant. The other one is grease. So aluminium complexes are a reasonably common uh, type of grease. They tend to be quite water resistant. Um, so both simple aluminium and complex aluminium greases are out there in the market, although they're just not anywhere near as popular as say a, a lithium or a calcium sulfonate. So aluminium complex greases could be a source of contamination and if you get it into your used oil analysis sample then it will show up in the results. 
Also machining swarf. So we might not necessarily think of this as a contaminant, but when your um, whatever it is, gearbox or or transmission, final drive, engine, when it's produced, there's a certain amount of machining that goes into it. And usually if the if you receive a, a new part, the reason we recommend to do a system flush is because there could be residual machining swarf that is contained, let's say for example, within the oil reservoir. So we wanna make sure we get all that stuff out. Um, you know, there could be, for example, leftover remnants from uh, the construction of the, the piston head, right? Just as an example. Um, so that's where some aluminum contamination could get in. As this stuff circulates around, it will obviously break down into smaller and smaller components. Eventually, it will show up as wear metals. Finally, um, aluminium can be present because it's a reasonably common uh, manufacturing catalyst. So aluminium chloride is used in quite a lot of um, chemical reactions as a, as a catalyst. So it's not actually directly in the product. Um, it's just used as a catalyst. However, should any of the catalyst um, end up contaminating the finished product, then that's how aluminium could show up as well. Realistically, um, although we've talked about, you know, um, aluminium additives as well as um, aluminium wear metals and aluminium contaminants, realistically, aluminium is going to come from one of two places most of the time. So 99% of the time, it'll either be aluminium in the form of wear metals or aluminium in the form of dirt, right? So that's kind of what it comes down to. All right. I hope this has been a helpful quick video to help you troubleshoot if you do see elevated aluminium in your oil samples. As usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.